I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzymental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to talk to you about a condition that occurs when your gut microbes get out of balance. And that is known as small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO. So the gut harbors anywhere from 3 to 4 pounds of bacteria. And this is also known as the gut microbiome. And these beneficial bugs are so important to human health that they're often touted as the forgotten organ, or even sometimes the second brain. I actually call them the first brain because the brain inside your skull runs only on the nutrients that are approved and dispersed by this so-called second brain. So for that reason, I call the gut again the first brain. And so what these organisms do for you is that they promote a healthy immune system, they assist with digestion, they fight off pathogens and produce important vitamins like certain B vitamins and vitamin K2. However, just like anything else in nature, the gut microbiome is a delicate and dynamic ecosystem that is constantly shifting to stay balanced and healthy. And when it shifts out of balance due to various dietary and lifestyle factors, dysbiosis, or bacterial imbalance, can occur. And this is what opens the door for SIBO. While bacteria are normally present throughout the entire gastrointestinal tract, the amount will vary depending on what part of the GI tract is being examined. Normally, in a healthy gut, the majority of bacteria reside in our large intestine, while the small intestine contains relatively little bacteria. Additionally, the types of bacteria we find in the small intestine differ quite a bit from those we find in the large intestine. SIBO results when too many and or the wrong types of bacteria are found within the small intestine, and such a scenario occurs when bacteria which should be in our large intestine migrate to our small intestine, or when bacteria normally present in our small intestine simply aren't moving down to our large intestine as they should. As a result, we now have bacteria present where they shouldn't be, which can lead to a variety of problems. So what are the symptoms of SIBO? Overgrowth in the small intestine can provoke bacteria to ferment and feed off undigested carbohydrates found in the foods we eat. A byproduct of this fermentation process includes hydrogen and methane gas production. In excess, these bacterial gases can provoke a variety of gastrointestinal symptoms, including gas, bloating, abdominal pain, constipation, or even diarrhea. Bacterial fermentation can also lead to the production of toxic byproducts that can irritate and damage the gut lining, promoting nutritional deficiencies and increased gastrointestinal permeability, also known as leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut can allow undigested food particles, toxins, and bacteria to enter systemic circulation, provoking an immune response and subsequent inflammation. This can ultimately lead to the development of systemic issues including rosacea, food sensitivities or allergies, chronic fatigue syndrome, and autoimmune conditions like fibromyalgia. In addition, excess bacteria can also disrupt bile acids, which are compounds required for fat digestion, contributing to fat malabsorption and deficiencies in in your fat-soluble vitamins, which are, again are vitamins A, D, E, and K. Bacteria can also compete for nutrients like iron and vitamin B12, consuming them before we have the chance to absorb them. So what causes small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? The body has many protective mechanisms to keep bacterial populations under control, including stomach acid, digestive enzymes, proper gut motility, and a robust gut immune system, but dysfunction in any of these antibacterial mechanisms can predispose the gut to dysbiosis and bacterial overgrowth. Unfortunately, several dietary and lifestyle factors can disrupt or impair these important protective barriers. For example, chronic stress has been shown to decrease stomach acid and digestive enzyme output, slow gut motility, and disrupt the gut immune system. Chronic use of acid-lowering drugs like proton pump inhibitors and pain medications may also slow gut motility, predisposing individuals to SIBO. 
Additionally, the standard American diet, or the SAD diet, which is typically high in refined sugars and carbohydrates, can disrupt a specific type of movement in our gut known as the migrating motor complex, or MMC. The MMC serves as the custodian of the gut, sweeping extra bits of food and bacteria down the small intestine and toward the exit, preventing stagnancy or the buildup of bacteria. Breath testing is the most common procedure for diagnosing SIBO. This typically involves consuming a carbohydrate-containing beverage, which is usually a beverage with glucose or lactulose, and measuring exhaled levels of hydrogen and methane gas over a three-hour time period. Measuring the types and amounts of gases exhaled in the breath provides clinicians with a useful tool for diagnosing bacterial overgrowth, and additionally, the type of gas pattern produced can serve as a predictor of effects on bowel motility. Hydrogen-dominant SIBO is associated with diarrhea-like symptoms, while those with methane-dominant gas patterns are five times more likely to experience constipation. If considering breath testing, it's recommended that individuals work with a qualified medical practitioner who is experienced in interpreting breath test results. So for today, guys, I just wanted to tell you about the causes of SIBO, about what SIBO is and how it develops, and I'll detail several ways to treat SIBO in a future episode. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.